All right, so I've had a lot of customer requests for antler, and I've told everybody no for years and years and years for a lot of reasons, sourcing it, and also um, being confident that this material is going to hold up over time. People have used antler for knife handles for years and years and years um, because, I mean, it's just, it lasts forever. But when you look at this, I cut this little spot off of here and you can see that it's porous in there, okay? That's actually a hole. So that center section is looks like a sponge. And to me, I'm not confident cutting this up, um, machining it in half and then putting it on a knife and hoping that it'll last. I'm just not comfortable with that. So like any natural materials, uh, before you put them on a knife, I recommend you stabilize them. And that's what we're gonna try to do with this material and see if it works. Now, a couple years ago, I had a customer um, give me some big cherry burl discs. So at that time, I bought this vacuum pump and chamber. I think I got it off eBay. Um, and I also bought this, it's called cactus juice. And that is a stabilizing resin that basically uh, you pump it through this stuff with this vacuum, you heat it up, it cures, and you have stabilized material. So there's a couple variables in today's video. This stuff is a couple years old and I don't think you're supposed to use it after a few months. So that might be a problem. And also, I'm just not sure what this is all gonna look like once I cut this down. Now I bought this thinking, that I could use from this to this for one section and this to this for another section, getting two sets of scales out of this piece. And then I might cut off a couple other ones to use as little pieces for segmented scales and so on. So let's get into this project and hope this all works out. All right, so I kind of marked where I want to cut some of these pieces off and I'm going to just go to the portable bandsaw and see how this stuff uh, cuts off of here with this. I'll put a link below to the blades I use for the portable bandsaw that seem to work pretty good. All right, so it actually cuts really easy on that bandsaw, and I was able to do a pretty good straight cut there. And then you can see kind of what it looks like on the inside. Now, I'm sure, depending on a lot of stuff, a lot of variables is how the inside of these antlers look, but you can tell there's just a lot of voids and stuff that I really think needs to be stabilized. So I'm going to cut these other two pieces in half, just like I did this. I'm going to clean these up on the grinder a little bit, probably just make them nice and flat. Um, and then we're going to prep these to try to stabilize these things and see how it turns out. But so far, so good. They machine really nice, stinks a little bit, um, but I think we're gonna have some cool handles. All right, so I did a little research. Um, it's the next day. I was getting ready to stabilize this stuff and the little bit of work I have into it, I didn't want to ruin this whole process by using this older cactus juice that I had. So I just ordered some new stuff. Um, and what I'm gonna do, let me show you really quick, is I was able to get four really nice sets uh, out of that one antler. And I think what I'm going to do is kind of, even, I might even put this in the oven and just let it bake for a little bit and make sure all that moisture is out of there. I know with wood, um, stabilizing it, you need to make sure it's super, super dry. So I don't know exactly how old this uh, antler is. So this will give me about a week waiting for that new cactus juice to show up to let these dry out really good. And then I will be back as soon as that shows up and see how it goes. But I think that I'm still gonna run into some problems because if you look at this one, which is the base, it's really brittle and and I know that 
what cactus juice resin does is it it more uh it's obviously a stabilizing resin so it stabilizes everything but it doesn't necessarily fill voids in material it's a little too thin especially when you bake it off it really just kind of rigidizes everything um, as opposed to filling stuff like aluminite resin does um, so i'm still not 100 percent sure on this project but i'll check back in in about a week uh, once we get that new cactus juice and i'm gonna do a little more research in the meantime all right guys we're back we got our new cactus juice ready to go and <clears throat> i have spoke with a ton of people on antlers so hopefully i can explain a little bit about what i've learned over the last week of looking into this um, and this will help you guys out so the first thing we are going to stabilize these antlers um, i've got like i said i've got my cactus juice resin ready to go which it comes with like this little activator thing um, and again, I think this stuff's only good for about six months after you buy it. Um, and this is actually very expensive. I think this was like $80 or 70 or 80 bucks for this jug of this stuff. So <clears throat> kind of expensive stuff. I've got my pump here. I'll show you guys in a second. And um, we're going to get this stabilized. I'm going to show you that process. And then I'm going to also explain to you a very important step of this that I have learned recently that I think will really result in a really good handle. All right, so we're putting our this activator stuff in this cactus juice right now. And <clears throat> we're gonna shake this up really good. And we are gonna get our antler material ready to go. Um, I think I showed it earlier. I've got about, well, four sets to put in here. So what we're gonna do and this is, well, here, let me show you. This is the little pot I have, and you can see it's got this little seal on it that kind of keeps it, uh, keeps the vacuum on it. Then it comes with this little lid with a gauge and this little cheap vacuum motor. Again, I'll put a link below to this thing uh, over on Amazon so you guys can check it out. But I think what I'm going to do is just kind of set all this antler in here. Now, when you do this, obviously you need to make sure that your material is small enough to fit in your little pot. And also, you need to get something to set on top of it. And I just use this weird old weight thing that I've got because it'll float up once you pour your resin in there. So we're gonna put this on here. Okay. Yeah, I put my activator stuff in here. Get this all stirred up good. Looks pretty good. And you just want to make sure you cover all your material all the way. And that's about good right there. They used almost the whole jug. This is the half gallon jug. You can buy this in gallons and big jugs if you want. Now we're gonna put our little lid on here and we're gonna pull a vacuum on this. Now what happens sometimes when you do this is it foams up a lot. You have to control it a little bit. You don't want it to foam up so much and suck this stuff into your pump because it'll ruin it. Um, so we're gonna kick vacuum on and I'm gonna watch it really closely. I'll move where the camera is so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then we're going to let this run until no more bubbles are coming out of this material. That means all the air has been pulled out of it and it's kind of getting impregnated with this uh, stabilizing resin. So let's do it. All right, let's kick the vacuum on and see what it does. <clears throat> all right, so we're starting to build some vacuum right now. Hopefully you guys can see through this. It's already starting to pull bubbles out of it. And I'm just watching it really close so it doesn't foam up a lot. And I can see bubbles forming. Like I said, when you do real punky wood, it bubbles a lot. This isn't very bad at all. So 
Hopefully the camera is picking up some of these bubbles. I'm not sure. All right, so there you guys can probably kind of see some of those bubbles coming up. There's the vacuum. And we're gonna let this run, like I said, until no more bubbles are coming out of it. And then I let it run even a little bit longer. And then you're supposed to let it sit in there and soak for two to three times the amount it took for the vacuum to stop pulling those bubbles. So I'm gonna let this run for a few hours probably and then let it soak overnight. And then I'll check back in tomorrow morning to get this cured up. Um, and I'll show you guys that process a little bit too. All right, it's the next morning. What I did is I left that vacuum pull on there for like about five hours or so. That was roughly how long it took for it to stop pulling air bubbles out of it. Then I just let it soak um, all night in that. They say, they say you want it to soak twice as long as what you pull vacuum on it. So again, if you guys are gonna do this and you buy this stuff, make sure you read all the directions on it because I'm just giving you like a really rough idea on how I'm doing this. Um, so make sure you read the directions. Now what I'm gonna do, is I've got a little tray with some tin foil on it, and I'm gonna pull these out of here, out of the little pot, and basically just let them drip dry out of here. You can see it's it's very runny stuff, um, and you kind of want to get as much of that excess out of there as possible because when you bake it, it almost comes out. I, I'm assuming because it uh, liquefies even a little more with temperature. So uh, I don't know if I've said it or not, but this is a heat cured resin. So you have to bake it for, I believe, a couple hours at about 200 degrees to cure this resin. So that's the next step. Um, double check. I'm going to just do this in my uh, little oven I use for Kydex out here. Uh, make sure you get one of those little cheap oven thermometers because you want to make sure, I think there's like a range between 180 to a little over 200 degrees to bake this at. So um, the temperature on those things is always really inaccurate. So make sure that that's on. I'm going to bake this for a few hours and um, I'll check back in once it's done and kind of show you guys what it's looking like. And then I'm gonna go over the next very, very, very important step. So make sure you stick along to the end of the video and hopefully you guys are learning something. So I'm looking at all this stuff, it's out of the oven. You can see it kind of sticks to that tin foil a little bit and you can see here, this is some of that cured resin. It's really hard um, and I can tell by picking up one of these antlers it's absorbed a lot and hardened because it's a lot heavier now I think what I want you guys to kind of get from this video is how I'm gonna do this is gonna be I think about as extreme as you can get I know that everybody will argue with me in the comments that you know they use handle material they don't do any or they use antler and they don't do anything to it they put it on a knife they don't have problems I would rather be safe than sorry. When I install a handle on a knife, I wanna be 100% confident that I'm not gonna have any problems down the road. So just to show you guys something here, the so what it's done is if you look at the punkiness here, okay? I used to be able to really dig my fingernail into that. And what that resin has done is it's just really hardened it up a little bit. Now, like I said, it does not fill those voids, okay? So one thing you need to take into consideration when you are doing this is make sure you have it ground about to the thickness you want to install it on your knife, okay? Because when you start grinding through this stuff, you don't want to hit that void section, I mean, as much as possible. I think if you kind of hit it, it could leave a cool... Uh, a cool look on the handle, but make sure you get your handles down to just about the size you want them while you're doing this process, okay? The next thing, and I think this is the most important step, um, is I'm going to, I already did it on a set over here and I'm gonna show you. I use this Starbond CA glue. Um, and basically what this does is it seeps down in there and actually fills all those voids, okay? so. 
It takes quite a bit of this when you get a handle that's like this one that you can see it's real pity. It takes a few coats and a few different applications and it just continues to absorb, absorb, absorb. Now, this is black and I'm not gonna do these sets with black. I wanna do these with clear to leave it a little more natural. But I'm gonna show you right now what it looks like um, using this stuff. And again, I did multiple coats on this and it really came out nice. Um, you can see, I really want how all those voids are filled. It's rock hard. I mean, just rock hard. And I think that that is a handle that will never fail. Um, I haven't decided yet when I'm going to put this little set on. Might go on a little pocket muck for me. But I'm really, really stoked with how these turned out. I mean, just look really closely. All those voids are filled. And that is the ticket. So I think what I learned from this whole project is, you know, going overkill on this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think that if you have antler like this and you don't want to go through the whole process of the buying the vacuum and the pressure thing, and I, I almost think you could skip that step if you really, really wanted to and just go straight to the CA glue if this material has dried out really good. Um, but again, it's totally personal preference, up to you guys what you wanna do. I just wanted to show you guys my process for this. Um, I'm really happy with the cactus juice and the CA glue process. Um, I think that it's just kind of a foolproof method to where you know, you're always gonna be confident that those handles are gonna work out good. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. If you did, make sure you check out my Patreon account. You know, throw me five bucks a month just to support the channel, it means a lot. And like always, I will put links in the description to everything I use in this video so you guys can go click on it, buy it, and do everything I just did. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, drop it in the comments below. And like always, guys, thank you for watching.